Hi there. Recently I made a video where I go over the 172 extensions that come built in into the latest release of Inkscape. Link in the description if you want to check it out. I figured most people may not want to go over a feature film length video just to see if there is something they can use, so in this video I will go over what I consider to be the most useful extensions. There are a lot of extensions that are super important for specific occasions, but here I'll prioritize the more general purpose ones whose functionality you are most likely to use in your day-to-day -day work. Ok, let's get started. Export layer slices from the export menu is one of those extensions that gives you functionality so essential that you think it'd be in the main program. It allows you to export multiple objects as separate files. And no, you cannot do that with the vanilla exported in Inkscape. Like it happens frequently with the extensions, it is just a bit more awkward than what it needs to be. You have to create a new layer called slices, put all the objects you want to export in that layer, and then draw a rectangle over all the areas you want to export. This extension will export the area inside of every rectangle as its own individual file. If you have a ton of objects you want to export as separate, this extension will save you hours. But you still need to make the rectangles by hand, which will slow down your whole process. But here's a really nice tip that can help you with that. You can create the rectangles fitting the objects automatically using the frame extension from the generate from path menu. Just set the color of the fill and stroke to transparent so it won't show when you export it. And that's it. You have the functionality of exporting multiple selected objects as different files on Inkscape. Markers are little paths that are attached to the nodes of other paths. They move with the nodes, change color with the color of the stroke, and can't be edited. Color markers from the Styles menu simply allows you to change the color of the markers, which is so useful when you're working with markers that you think that functionality already exists in the program. But no, you have to use this extension. Luckily, using it is super easy and straightforward. You have a color selection mode where you can change the color of the field and stroke of the markers, just like with any other object. You may not see any change if the marker didn't have a field or stroke enabled, but that depends on the way it was built. All in all, a really useful extension that saves you the time to rebuild and reapply the marker to make some simple color changes. The text menu has some of the most useful extensions in the entire list in my opinion. Almost all of them have some usefulness when you work with text, but if I have to select one that you should keep in mind, it will probably be Lorem Ipsum. This extension will generate a Lorem Ipsum, which is a placeholder text that's designed to work really well as a placeholder. Lorem Ipsums are extremely handy at the moment of testing layouts that use text. And the great thing about this extension is that it is super easy to use and really flexible. You can generate a new text object with a Lorem Ipsum, or apply it to a text box or object, and it will fit perfectly inside that object. You can also change the amount of sentences, paragraph, and still will fit with the area. It's really easy to use and it just works. This last one I'm not that familiar with, but I do recognize it as an important feature that should be included in the main program as a feature. Pixel Snap from the Modify Path menu will allow you to snap a path to the pixel grid. As you may know, since Inkscape is a vector software, it does not display the pixel grid, it's invisible, and it's impossible to snap to it. This extension will let you do that, even if you don't see it. This is a functionality that's not present as of the latest release of Inkscape, and that while I personally don't have too much use for it, I feel it should be an option in the snapping bar. And here is another important functionality you should know. This time, not on Inkscape, but on YouTube. You can subscribe to my channel for weekly tutorials on Inkscape. Don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss any videos. Also, likes and comments are highly appreciated and helps the video and the channel being seen by more people. That was all, now we continue with more Inkscape functionality. The color extension menu has a ton of useful extensions that change the color of the selected paths, but to me the most important one, the one extension that you absolutely need to know about, is Grayscale. Grayscale will set the color of the selected objects to a grayscale, and unlike the similar Desaturate, which only moves the saturation slider all the way to zero, this extension will adjust the lightness to maintain the right value. It is really useful to see your illustrations in black and white, 
which is a common technique that's used to be able to pick better colors for your illustration based on the existing values. We talked about setting paths to grayscale, but setting raster images to grayscale may be even more important. HSB Adjust from the Raster menu is an extension that lets you adjust the colors from an imported raster image. You can use it to give them a hue tint or to make it darker or lighter, but most of the time it is more useful to set them to a grayscale, mostly to use them as textures in the background or something like this. To do this, just set the saturation to zero. You can also mess with the saturation value to get different degrees of color. If you work with books, magazines, PDFs or any type of document that uses layouts, you have to know about the guides creator from the document menu. With guides creator, you can create all sorts of guides that will apply to all pages in the document. This includes all types of margins and proportions you can think of. What's really great about this extension is that these properties are applied to all the pages, including those ones that have different proportions. You have a lot of options and it's really easy to use and set up, especially if you want to be accurate with the numbers. Since we are talking about the document menu, I might as well give a quick shout out to a couple of other important but considerably more niche extensions from the same menu. In app layout, we create a grid of multiple squares, the type you use to print, say, a grid of stickers or something like that. And Perfect One Cover allows you to calculate and make the guides for a cover for a Perfect One book, which is a binding technique that changes the shape of the cover according to the quantity of pages. Also, Printing marks can also be quite important to create printing marks for when you want more professional and accurate printing. All very useful and very well worth to keep in mind, in my opinion. I know I mentioned in the intro that I want to give this to general purpose extensions, but I couldn't resist to put two extensions that are really good at making two very specific things that are hard to do manually. Calendars and charts. From the render menu, Calendar will build really nice looking calendars with the correct date you put in. It's super easy and straightforward to use, really customizable and it works automatically adapting to your document. I love when extensions just work straight away. Nice Charts is another extension that lets you do some basic but very complete charts with your own data. I found it to be a bit more cumbersome to use than the calendar, mainly because it's harder to input your own data but I still think it's the best way to make a chart inside Inkscape other than importing it from another application. And that was all for today. I remind you that the video with the full 172 extensions is on the description below. Also, I make videos on Inkscape and illustration every week, so if you want more, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment telling me what extensions you use all the time. Have a great day. Bye.